Um, um, don't only practice isolated kicks. You know, just one kick, one kick, a run off. Set your kicks up. Fakes, feigns, do a punch first, then kick, etc. That's perfect type of setups, and that's way more realistic as well. But make sure you do practice your kicks out of nowhere. Just boom. Your instant side kicks, they come out of nowhere. But also make sure you set up your kicks. Don't be isolated. You know, don't be some textbook and stuff. It, it's, it's way more advanced to, to set up your kicks. So, um, turnaround side kicks. Uh, you can Keep the keep the uh, upper body in line. And can you can lean back for leverage, or you can keep upright with your hands under guarded, but avoid bending or tilting left or right because that that creates that it, the imbalance when you you're tilting left or right. When you, when you feel when you see you're falling over, that's usually the, the case. And taking a look at yourself on film, taking a look at yourself in, in the mirror. Um, and, and you might notice that uh, you're leaning forward a little bit and, or leaning back too much and stuff. So your center line, that's, that's the line of, of you know, your, your main angle of your kick and stuff like that. So here uh, we're, we're also noticing that you could do risers, you know, similar to the hook kick. You can have rising kicks. They're very sneaky. You can slip under a guard or... When you make contact, you can then snap up the opponent's head or chin, the nose, very nasty. And, um, so, and of course, we have the hook kick here, um, showing the hook kick, which is thrown off target, and then the finishing hook part hits the target. It's uh, great for tricking opponents who think you missed with your kick, and then they start to approach you for a counter and get caught as they're coming in. It's fantastic for that. So it's also great for getting around guards in defensive positions. Uh, somebody's going to react to that kick and they're going to put their hands forward expecting that type of thrust coming or whatever and when then you get the hook kick coming around on the side. And it's very good that way. So it's, it's thrown off and then it's snapped but you got to be careful. Be, you have to practice that really hard. That's an advanced kick. And a lot of people can go through the motions of the kick, but I'm going to tell you right now that the hook part of your kick on a lot of people's kicks, when you don't have that kick down, it's weak. It's a slap at best. It's doing crap. Okay? And because the nature of it is thrown off, you're already kind of throwing it into somebody's guard, possibly. Um, same concept with punches. Here I'm showing you, you can punch your opponent's guard down or away, creating an opening for a follow-up punch to slip through. Um, you, you might have seen this, so it's a great advanced technique. And um, yeah, know your distances with those punches though. Don't only be practicing at very close distances. Um, so and knowing your distance is gonna be critical for, for doing advanced moves with uh, your opponent's guard as, as well, so. Um, yeah, I'm pointing to the doorknob and uh, hook kick to the doorknob. I don't know if people call that a snap kick, right? No, it's not a snap kick. That's a hook kick in Taekwondo. And I've always known it as a hook kick. Yeah, I'm pointing to the leaf. But you have to practice that. That's, that snap it is got to be is is a very vulnerable kick in in terms of uh, power. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you could also use kicks to uh, to um, swat your opponent's defense away. Of course you can. Um, uh, the Taekwondo crescent kicks are fantastic for this. And I've used them countless times in sparring. I, I find that uh, roundhouse-like and, and roundabout sweeping across-like kicks can be jammed or blocked a bit easier than linear straightforward thrusting kicks. Uh, which tend to require the opponent to sidestep with legs and feet as well as using upper extremities. extremities. So, um, so be careful with your um, roundabout uh, stuff when you're kicking your opponent's guard away. And, uh, and stuff Because you, you're trying to, obviously you're, gonna, you're trying to come from some angles. There's some kind of arc involved, some kind of sweep involved. I mean, you could just kick your opponent's into your opponent's guard and try to smash it into them as well. You know, throwing fakes to help keep the opponent's guard confused and 
poorly committed or to freeze up their guard, uh, that that'll, that'll also help. In fact, that's critical. And we'll be reviewing that a lot more, but you should also be seeing a lot of that already in these videos. You should be seeing a lot of them. They must be second nature to you, okay? Because obviously fighting is dynamic and your opponent isn't just standing there, so they're doing heaps of things too. And if you've done any sparring, you've, you've probably been in that situation where you wanted to throw something and then your opponent wasn't there or they moved away quickly and you sort of had to readjust and you, you felt that sort of, that, that, that stalling in yourself. And that's natural. And you say, yeah, because your opponent's no longer there. You were about to unload and now they're gone. So you got to get used to being in those semi-chambers, in those semi-loading positions, they can't be shocking to you. And um, they can't throw you off guard and throw you off balance. If anyone has ever missed wildly when they thought they were sure they had a surefire connect, you know that can throw you off balance, can throw you off balance badly and have you scrambling. Um, yes, don't forget your stance fundamentals. Or, although advanced techniques can break the rules, fundamentally avoid crossing over or avoid the wrong times to be crossed over <laughs> and that's easier said than done right so but um yeah so that, that fun's the fundamental thing but you're not going to stick only to the books okay you're going to take advantage of all types of positions and stuff just know when to do that and when not to be vulnerable your your different stance positions can help you mask unexpected kicks like instant kicks that appear to be from less than ideal positions or the lead kick or in a lead position which supposedly has less power and stuff like that you could surprise somebody so practice your different weight ratios and weight transfers which you're seeing right here and stuff like that here maybe it's a little bit exaggerated and stuff but the, the weight ratios and stuff will not only be from your legs they will also be from your upper body um, in a fake way and also in a real way and they will help you uh, when you get really good at it, you can mask your weight positions and proportions. A lead foot can look like it's heavily planted, but actually have little weight and is ready to whip a surprise instant kick. Right? Make up combos that make sense. If you're punching after a couple of kicks, you should expect to be advancing in order to be in a reasonable distance to land the punch. There are other combos, obviously, other ideas. You can reverse those ideas, do long distance ones expecting your opponent to come in. But the point is to make sense. If you side kick somebody, it's very likely your turnaround wheel kick is useless. Unless you took a nice advancing step first before throwing it, your, your wheel kick's going nowhere. The same thing goes for a close distance type of move. So you shouldn't have a tremendous amount of practice throwing an uppercut and then throwing a side kick. That shouldn't be your go-to combo. If, you, if you're throwing a side kick after you're throwing an uppercut, you, you're going to hit your sparring partner in the balls.